a few things. One. Two. Three. Four. I really am a big fan of Zach's uh, Man of Steel, and uh, Zach and I have been friends for a long time. But, um, you know, James is a great filmmaker. I, you know, he's, I worked with him on Dawn of the Dead. He wrote the scripts. And finally, five. An alarming new fallout from the surging Delta variant. Cases soaring. More than 100,000 reported in 24 hours this weekend. But when Wonder Woman 1984 premieres on Christmas Day in theaters and streaming on HBO Max, it'll be the first of Warner Brothers' entire 2021 roster of new movies to be released in theaters and on its streaming service, HBO Max. Quit pitting Zack Snyder and James Gunn against each other just because James Gunn did a movie for Marvel. Also, James Gunn did something comic book filmmakers never did. He asked people to support local comic book stores on the main poster. I am using this exact same poster for my star rating for that reason. Now that that's out of the way, DC dropped two bangers this year! Earlier this year, we saw what is easily Zack Snyder's masterpiece, Zack Snyder's Justice League, and now we have James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, which just cracked my DCEU top three. Both of these films are visionary works in their own right. If Zack Snyder's Justice League is lawful good, then James Gunn's The Suicide Squad is chaotic good. It isn't fair to compare this movie to 2016's Suicide Squad, as David Ayer had his vision taken away from him, so quit dunking on that version until the Ayer cut comes out. If anything, this film makes me want to watch Ayer's cut even more. James Gunn took this film back to Tromeo and Juliet in terms of its R rating. It's a violent and macabre film that is also genuinely sincere. There were moments in this film that featured more practical gore than an 80s slasher film, but then turned around and touched at my heartstrings. I felt totally guilty watching this on HBO Max. I'm buying a ticket ASAP to see this on the biggest screen possible. In terms of death, all bets are off and no one is safe. Don't think for a moment anyone has plot armor. Gunn does a lot of interesting things with this film. He uses Chirons cleverly. He dodges the blank time period earlier cliche by telling an event through different angles. The first shot of this film is awesome as Gunn transitions from a puddle to Michael Rooker's savant. Everything that made me a fan of James Gunn since I first watched Dawn of the Dead 2004 in Slither is on display. It's also gorgeous in its pure carnage. It's hard to talk about performances here as this is truly an ensemble piece. There isn't one bad performance in this film. Viola Davis is cold and calculating as Amanda Waller. Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn gets an awesome action set piece straight out of an old school 80s action film, proving why she should get Robert Downey Jr. money. John Cena is playing a bizarro version of himself as Peacemaker and it totally works. I really want to see the Peacemaker show now. But Daniela Melchior runs away with this film as Ratcatcher 2, as she is the heart of this film, much like Ray Fisher Cyborg is the heart of Zack Snyder's Justice League. She is going to be a star. I can feel it. Let me put it to you like this. I am definitely afraid of mice and rats, but I want my own Sebastian, damn it. Joel Kinnaman actually got some charisma injected to him because Rick Flagg has some great moments here. This film also makes Starro the Conqueror intimidating. I was worried about incorporating Starro the Conqueror into this, but it totally works. It's this blend of brave and the bold storytelling with John Ostrander's run of Suicide Squad, and I was all in on this. In fact, that is John Ostrander himself injecting the bombs. While a couple of the more juvenile jokes don't land, and without spoilers, I have the same issue with the post credit scene that I did with Black Widow's post credit scene. When 95% of this film works, those just feel like petty nitpicks. Look, DC dropped two genuine instant classic comic book movies this year. Both Zack Snyder's Justice League and The Suicide Squad will be tied in my top 10 favorite films of 2021 because I am getting sick and tired of these great filmmakers being pitted against each other all the time. These are both auteur-driven comic book movies that Kevin Feige is too scared shitless to put out. 
James Gunn just said with his whole chest, Fuck Kevin Feige. I'm gonna make the bloodiest superhero movie ever. I thought release the Snyder Cut was about artistic integrity. How about supporting the guy who wrote the Dawn of the Dead screenplay that put Zack Snyder on the map? So yeah, the Suicide Squad, much like Zack Snyder's Justice League, is definitely getting a 4.5 out of 5. Be sure to like, comment, share, spread the word of New Rums Media. Follow me on all my socials at New Rums Media. And until then, release the air cut.